Welcome back to Girls Next Level, guys. We are back with part two of Girls Next Door, season one, episode seven, Just Shoot Me. We're getting our dream pictorial. And where did we leave off, Bridget? I mean, we were just about, like, so we left it off a little cliffhanger. Yeah. I'm going up to email my professor to see if there, if I absolutely have to come to class. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know I do because it's a final. It's not just I'm missing a class. Yeah. But I think I'm, like, starting to see the writing on the wall that this is going to go a little late and maybe I need to be proactive on this. And so I that's where we left off on this. And coming back into it, though, we are shooting the hula hoop scene. And I just want to say, like, I feel like this scene, when I think back on Girls Next Door, before we even started rewatching mm -hmm. things, when I think back on Girls Next Door... The first image that pops in my head is our hula hoop being seen. It's, it's very on brand. Yeah. And I think it's so cute. I think we all look really, really mm -hmm. cute. And I have to say that I absolutely love my hair in this one. And it's one it's of really my... It's really cute. One of my, still one of my most favorite hairdos. Thank you, Laurent. And I love our outfits. So you picked out your um, pink flamingo dress. Yeah. I, well, I had that dress. That was just in my closet. Mm -hmm. Like normal. <laughs> and I picked out a juicy couture bikini with a little skirt that went over it. Kendra wore shorts and then she borrowed a bikini top from me, like an orange bikini top. And we must have all got together and coordinated. Otherwise, how would I have given her the bikini top? So we must have all decided we want bright colors and fun and everything. Yeah. So we did that hula hoop shot. Also that same day, they did a cute little shot of me in a different bikini with Carola the bird on my shoulder. Mm -hmm. And it's one of my favorite pictures. And it just makes me think how sad it is how we took all this content and even like our individual photos and like the picture with the bird, it's all just like lost to the ether. Like we weren't given copies of any of this stuff. I think we were each allowed to choose one photo from our individual shoots that we could print out and sell at like conventions and stuff like yeah. autograph signing things yeah. but like we weren't given copies of these photos it's just shot and wasted right which is sad because I think we all loved our photos and there were so many scenes you guys didn't see that yeah. we shot like you're saying with the bird and um and I know it comes up later but and they show it like out of context but we shot in front of the mansion yeah and that you don't they don't see like all the pictures and they did use these but you don't see the setup of Hef's bed on in the studio and you don't see all the shots that we did over at the bunny house. And like, there was just so much content shot and really cute, cute photos. And so we had no idea like what was going to end up in the magazine and what wasn't and whether it was going to be like, uh, individuals and, and duos or single, like just, it was just all over the place. Like what, what might actually happen in the final cut or final edit of the magazine. And then there's this thing where I can tell I'm being prompted to say this. Like somebody in the interview was asking me, so Holly, who was the best hula hooper and who was the worst? I say I'm the best hula hooper because I am a world champion hula hooper. Like I can keep a hula hoop up forever. And somebody goes, who was the worst hula hooper? I go, Kendra. But I'm trying to say it in like a cute, fun, nice way. Like I'm not trying to be mean because who knows where they're going with this. Yeah. So I go, Kendra, I go, but it's only because she hasn't taken my super hula hooping class yet. Like, I'm just trying to play it off as, like, something cute. And in the commentary, I have it down here. So, yeah, you say, um, I'm talking about your hula hoop class. And, well, there's a couple of things I wanted to say here. Um, and you say Bridget's taken it. Mm -hmm. And um, and then and then in commentary, you tell Kendra, oh, you should sign up for my hula hoop class. And she goes, no, thanks. In a really flat, like, not amused way. Yeah, and I don't know what that's all about. And I'm totally jumping ahead on timeline here, but... During season one, we were all getting along great. Like, that's one of my favorite things about this episode is we're all so supportive of each other. But by the time we're recording this commentary, it's like the end of season one. And we'll get to it when we get to season two, but there's some attitude changes by we, the time. We may have already been shooting season two by the time we did commentary. Yeah. We probably were. So if you're watching this on DVD and you're watching it with the commentary, keep in mind, like, when we're filming, we're all getting along. We're all super supportive. But in the commentary, I think there might have been some attitude. I mean, there there is attitude. You can hear it. But there's just a little shift yeah. that we'll talk about when we get to. <laughs> yeah. Well, I wanted to ask you, though, what are your hula hooping tips? It's kind of hard to explain without, like, you know, being physically there. But I 
I'm actually not moving as much as you would think. It's just like tightening your core and just giving it a little bit of a sway. Like, I think I did teach you how to do it once, like during a fun in the sun or yeah. something. No, we it's did. just harder to explain, like without like being there to show somebody, oh. but I'm really good at hula hooping. Like I could stand there for like an hour and hula hoop and like the hoop wouldn't go anywhere. Where did you learn to be so good at hula hooping? Was it Hooters? Yeah, because at Hooters, like if you had any downtime, they would always want you like sitting at tables doing card tricks or hula hooping or there were like a few things you could do. Was it roller skating or something? I was a roller skating waitress, but that was something that I added. Like oh. I brought my skates and they let me do it, which today they people probably wouldn't let you. They'd probably be like, no, that's a liability. Go right fuck off. But back then they thought it was great. They loved it that I did that. And I would like carry like trays of food on my head while I was roller skating. Like it got complicated. Whoa. Yeah. You gotta have many talents to work at Hooters. I loved working at Hooters. I feel like it would be a fun job too. And then Arnie, there's a scene where Arnie says, okay, girls, you know, get crazy with it. And if your boob pops out, like, who cares? It's Playboy. Yeah. And I just think it was really funny because there's just this look on all of our faces where we're like, uh, uh, like, I don't know. We just look like. Well, I think that was the first thing we shot. I think they were like, we're going to warm you up by doing the clothed stuff and then we'll get to naked. So we were still kind of like, uh. Our boob was going to pop out? Yeah. Like, what? <laughs> And then they do another, okay, this one is really, we're starting to get really, like, bad here, I feel like. They do another on-the-fly interview with me, having me compare my body to Kendra's. Ugh. Having me say stuff like, 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 why is Kendra's body better than yours type of thing. Like, That's I don't know. fucked up. Yeah, so I'm like, well, because she has a flat stomach. Well, I've always liked butts. Even back then, before butts were in, I've always liked a big butt. But I just think it's crazy the fact that I was even asked to, it's like, compare. It's fucked up. It's so fucked up and gross. Yeah, or to, like, talk about why Kendra's body is, like, so much better, in quotes. You yeah. Know? Like, I just think, I'm oh like, this is going, this is getting bad. And this is when I'm starting, like, when I'm rewatching it now, like, in my room, I'm starting to, like, like feel freaked out by it. You know? Yeah. Like, I'm starting to be like, I don't, I'm not liking this so much anymore. And then it goes to us um, shooting in the pool. We're all posed on that raft. And that is a really hard thing to do. By yeah, the way. it was hard to balance. I think you can see it a little bit in the episode. They had a photo assistant in the pool kind of like holding the floaty until like the last possible minute. Because we had to like balance, position our bodies so we looked good. We're like probably oily from like sunscreen and lotion trying not to slide off that thing. Like it was a feat. Yeah, and I remember, too, if anybody started sliding off, that would move the whole floaty, and then everybody had to reposition, and it was so hard getting three people on the raft without another person falling off, and like you said, they had to have somebody hold it in place because it the second he let it go, you start floating and moving, but the camera yeah, needs you to exactly. stay in that same spot, but mm -hmm. the person can't hold it while the shot is being taken, or you'll see them, so like... It was like... They should have rigged up an anchor underneath it. They should have, <laughs> totally. Because I think they did that for other things later on. Remember there was that jet ski on a fight night in the pool? Yeah, that we all posed on. It was like anchored in there. Yeah. And I remember, oh, I thought this was the coolest thing, and I don't think it's on the show, but maybe it is, where they um, we shot for Guitar World, and they put the glass tables and just underneath the pool. Yeah. So it looked like we were standing on water. Yeah. That was so cool, I thought. Oh, that was amazing. That was fun. So this is the butt buffet scene. Yeah. You're and singing. people were asking me if I made that song up. And no, it was actually a hit song in 1946. Shut up! I'm lying. I'm oh, totally oh. Lying. <laughs> No, that's how long we were sitting there in that pose that I just started getting loopy and making up this silly little song because all our butts are like in a row. And then they cut to Kendra, which I think, I don't know. I mean, maybe she was annoyed. Maybe she was like, get this fucking bitch off the raft. But they cut to just like a resting bitch face shot of Kendra. But I think they are cutting it to make it look like she's like, fuck, this is annoying. <laughs> I don't think that she was, well, who knows? Maybe she was annoyed about the butt song, but I don't think so. I think it was just, we were in that position for a really long time. It's not comfortable. And it was bright out. So you're going to kind of be kind of squinty. Yeah, it was super bright out. It was hot. It was really hard to get the shot. 
Um, and we had to arch our backs kind of, yeah. and that is like very uncomfortable to sit there and do that. And you don't have any support cause we're on a pool flow and, and you have to like stick your butt up, but not clench your butt or else butts look cellulite when they clench. So it was like a, it, it was, was a challenge. Yeah. <laughs> and then all three people have to be doing it all right at the same time. Yoga poses could never. And then the, the, the raft has to be in the exact spot where the camera yeah. is like, there's just so much. So if Kendra is looking annoyed, it may not be by the buttons. Yeah. At all. <laughs> and then again, here I'm mentioning that, Oh, I- I'm saying to somebody, I have to be at class at 7 PM. Like it's like tick tock, tick tock. And Kendra even seems a little worried about the time. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know what she had to go do that night, but like, she was like, wait, damn, is that late already? Shit. Like she's, I don't know if she just thought the time flew or what, yeah. but like she was like, kind of like annoyed at how late it was too. But I also think it's funny because she's spot walks up to her and she doesn't notice that spots right there. And she's like, ah! yeah. <laughs> she's afraid of spot. Well, there was reason to be afraid of spot because you were told not to be eye level with like an African crane bird. Cause they could pluck your eye. And think it's a great. And they liked any who, <laughs> and they liked anything. He he liked anything shiny. So if there was like a belt buckle or yeah. like whatever, he was like pecking at it. Mm-hmm. Like he was very very friendly and and around all the time. And he would make a beeline for you if you came out to the backyard. But it was also something you didn't want to. And you could pet him, but it was something you just didn't want to take too far. I'm surprised he wasn't a liability concern because if I had a property like that that so many people were coming to, I would be like. Like maybe this bird needs to go to a zoo. I mean, he's definitely. I mean, I love spot. People. Don't get me wrong, but I would be terrified of like liability. Yeah. So now it's the scene. Arnie is lighting the grotto, and Hess comes up, and he's getting grumpy, and he <laughs> wants to know like why is this taking so long? And Arnie's trying to tell him how difficult it is. And I think we need to let the listeners know yeah. how difficult and dangerous it is to shoot in the grotto and all the lights being, how it, how difficult it is to light it, mm-hmm. but also how dangerous it is to have all that lighting equipment and high electricity and voltage going on and camera equipment and stuff in the grotto. Yeah, there was a major risk of electrocution. Mm-hmm. It was very dangerous. And then Hef's like, well, just call me when they're ready. Like, he was visibly frustrated. But I'm wondering, so this shoe, according to our schedule, was on a Monday. It was our first day of shooting. I think this is a good time to just, like, read the schedule to everybody, okay. too. So I'm just going to read the schedule so everybody can hear it. It says, following is a schedule and list of crew members for the photo shoot that is taking place at the mansion on June 20th and 21st and the Bunny House on June 22nd, 2005. And it also has Thursday the 23rd on here at Playboy Mansion West. Monday, shoot at the pool and grotto. Can I cut in since it's a Monday? So, Hef is grumpy. He wants us finished. But why? He had manly night on Mondays. Manly night, if you don't know, was a night he had a bunch of male friends over. They'd have dinner. They'd watch a movie. And that would go fairly late to like at least 9, 30, 10, something like that. Yeah. So he doesn't need us for anything. But yet he's grumpy and pissed. And he doesn't need to use the grotto for manly night. So he's grumpy and pissed at like 5 p.m.? Yeah, I think, I'm confused. He just, I think he just thinks it's taking too long altogether. Like, he feels oh. like we're all wasting his time or something, or wasting <laughs> money or something. And I don't think anyone at Playboy got paid overtime. Like, maybe some of the photo assistants. But, like, the photographers were under contract. And, like, the editors got salary. So it wasn't, like, an overtime concern. And he wouldn't have bothered himself with that anyway. He's yeah. having his room rebuilt in the studio for one day. He wasn't <laughs> pinching those pennies. <laughs> so it says on Monday, shoot at the pool and grotto. Call time for Holly and Bridget. 9 a.m. Call time for Kendra, 12 p.m. Tuesday, first shot, Bridget's bedroom. Second shot, Holly in the master bath. It says master bath. Hmm. Interesting. Third shot, Kendra's bedroom. Fourth shot, in front of the mansion with the limo, which, we, as we said, it shows up later. Call time for Holly and Bridget, 9 a.m. Call time for Kendra, 12 p.m. Must be nice. Wednesday, first shot, Holly sketching Bridget nude. Oh, by the way, this is over at the bunny house. Mm-hmm. First shot, Holly sketching Bridget nude, which is another photo shoot that, which is another photo shoot that got lost to the ether. Like I have little Polaroids of it in my scrapbook, 
And the pictures were so cute, but nobody ever saw them. It will yeah. never get published. Nope. Second shot, all three together for a headshot on the red couch. Third shot, all three together in the round bed, possibly a pillow fight, which we did do a pillow fight, and they're super cute. Yeah, and I think they show footage of it in season two. Oh. Fourth shot, trying on lingerie after a shopping spree. Which is funny to me because it's that same trope that, like, the producers wanted us to do a scene of, like, a Beverly Hills shopping spree. And I'm like, uh, I don't have that type of budget. Like, we were bargain shopping. Like, uh, photos of us trying on clothes after a shopping spree was not a day in the life at all. Yeah. <laughs> Call time for Holly and Bridget, 8 a.m. Call time for Kendra, 12 p.m. And then it says, note. Must be done shooting by 5 p.m. That was for all the above shoots. Interesting. Thursday. And that's in bold. Mm -hmm. And then on Thursday, it says, um, shoot at Studio West. Call time for Holly and Bridget, 9 a.m. Call time for Kendra, 12 p.m. And then it just goes on to give a list of all the people that are going to be on the shoot. Interesting. Yeah. So that is for the record, folks. So then uh, we're shooting these um, grotto scenes. I thought they looked really pretty. I really like the grotto scenes, but I have it in my notes here that I don't love how they actually looked when they got printed out because they're over retouched. Oh, like they whiten yeah. out our eyes too much. They like, there's one where you're kind of in the background and I feel like what they did was they were trying to put more light into your face via retouching and it looks weird. I think it looks weird too. You know the one. exact one I'm talking yeah, about? Because yeah, because I feel like it looks like it looks weird in my forehead and yeah. in between my eyes. Like you can stuff. tell it was artificial. Yeah, it does look weird. But I thought in the scene and the Polaroids and stuff, mm -hmm. like I thought that the it looked really pretty. I thought so too. And the, I thought the grotto was lit really well. I thought we all looked really good. The grotto, I know I've said it before, but the grotto and the pool are just so well done. They photograph so well. Whatever happened to Dalton Pools... Yeah. I need to know. I need to know, So I can too. hire them to make me a pool. <laughs> yes. I would love to hire them to make a pool. That would be amazing. Um, and then Kendra says she has an idea. We're like, we've done like a lot of shots uh -huh. in there. And like we've been shooting in the grotto for a while at this point. And then they kind of want to do like one other look. And Kendra says she has an idea. And she says, but it might be too pornish is what she says. How about I pour champagne? I don't think they have her say it. She starts to say it. But then I think they just cut to it being mm -hmm. done. Um, but I'm pouring champagne down Holly and Kendra is drinking it off of your leg stomach or stomach or something. Yeah. Yeah. And I remember when Hef first saw the polar to that shot, he goes, oh, that huh, will never get used. Like it was too explicit. But it got used. Yeah. Well, I, I put in here, stop to talk about this. Yeah. <laughs> I know. It's because at the moment when that was suggested, I thought, oh, that's kind of too much. I feel like that's too sexy. But at the time, I also wasn't uh, trying to like not do a, a shot. Yeah. Like if I'm, I'm willing to try pretty much, I mean, within reason, but I'm mm -hmm. willing to try pretty much whatever anybody suggests. And, and I'm happy that people have suggestions. So I'll, you know, do it. Maybe it turns out cute, whatever. So I wasn't like opposed to it, but I, uh, in my head I was thinking, oh, that's a little much with uh, not so much pouring the champagne down you, but Kendra licking it off of you. Yeah. I felt like was a, that part was like a little much. Um, but I'm like, okay, you know, whatever. And, and that was not stuff we were doing in real life, just to clarify. Not at all. <laughs> You're bursting so many bubbles I out know, there. Sorry. <laughs> um, but, and then I was thinking, well, they're never going to use this, but... Like you said, spoiler alert. Yeah, they use it. But apparently they it was not used in the Spanish and the Mexican editions of Playboy because it was considered too risque for those editions. I'm no editor or magazine publisher, so I don't know what it costs to like change out photos for different countries or different markets or whatever. But it seems like that would be kind of an expensive choice to be like, we're going to put this picture in here, but then we're going to change it out for the markets that won't use it. I don't think it was because the foreign editions of Playboy were so different. Oh. Like so much was different about it. It was just, they got their choice of whatever photos they wanted to pull. It wasn't like a direct translation or anything. Yeah. And there were a lot of rules back then in like Canada because the Canadian edition of the magazine I want to say it was the same as the American one, just because obviously because it's in English. But I think sometimes they did have to do a change out for Canadian distribution because 
Canadian distribution had rules against like bondage and yeah. incest. Well, so I, you couldn't have anything that remotely looked like bondage, even in the American Playboy, because then they'd have to switch it out for Canada. But also they didn't want like twins posing as playmates together because that's like an incest thing. Oh, well, I think the bondage thing comes up later in my um, King Kong photos. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I think there was an issue with that, Mm -hmm. even though it's like King Kong photos, like themed. Yeah, you couldn't even have like a ribbon around somebody's wrist or something because it suggested bondage. Yeah, so it comes up later, which we'll get into later. But um, so we do that whole scene in the grotto. And then Hef says something about he wants to add a shoot of of everyone in the bathhouse. Or he says he wants to add a shoot in the, in the bathhouse. You know what I have written down in my notes? I'm like, Hef had to walk out to the grotto because there was no texting. <laughs> that's, prob- that's probably why he was so grumpy because he had to shuffle all the way out to the grotto just to say one thing. Whereas now you could just text somebody. Well, you know what's funny about that too? I'm like, oh, I had to go all the way back in the house and get on my computer to like email my professor or yes. call my professor where I could have just like been doing it while I was sitting in hair and makeup down in bed. <laughs> Yeah, times were so different. <laughs> yeah. Another thing I wanted to add before we move on, because we were talking about the shot that was like kind of explicit, is photos like that when we were shooting them in the moment always felt kind of funny to me yeah. and not sexy. Like we were playing at being sexy and, oh, isn't this fun and funny? But like it wouldn't be till years later when I look back on the pictures, I'm like, oh, that looks pretty pornographic. And don't get me wrong, like I'm not embarrassed about any of those photos that are out there, but it's just interesting like the context and I feel like me wanting to be in Playboy was almost more of like a beauty type thing or like I would look at it as like wanting to do a beauty pageant rather than I want to be sexy and I think other people kind of interpret it that way like they think if you're going in Playboy you're just advertising that you're available and you want to be so sexual and that was not it at all and I don't think that's it for most women I think most women are like I want to look really pretty yeah for me it's like hitting a beauty standard like you said almost like winning a beauty pageant or something like that yeah and I know I'm not dumb like I know people are looking at it for like arousal purposes But I don't know. I think there's some people out there that really get the wrong idea and think that you are putting yourself out there as somebody who will fuck anybody. And it's like, I don't think that's where anybody was really coming from. (laughs) Yeah. Or that somehow now you deserve that kind of attention. Oh, yeah. That's totally people think that. Um, So Hef comes down and says about shooting in the bathhouse. And this is where when I'm rewatching it now later, I'm like, I need to turn this shit off. Like, oh. I can't from here, this point. Like, you can I, feel the stress. Yeah. Like, I just, well, I just know where this episode is going. Yeah. And I'm just like, it turned from, like, all this fun. Because I, too, thought the grotto mm-hmm. scene, like, even though I was like, oh, that's a little bit much on that last photo, I, too, thought that was just fun and playful. Yeah. And I liked you know, getting crazy with the mm-hmm. pictures and doing things that people hadn't done before and, like, making it fun and just having a good time with it. Um So up until this point, even though they're, like, making me do comparisons to bodies and that kind of stuff, I'm having a really good time. Yeah. And everything is really, really positive. And now things are going to start to shift. Yeah. And I was just, like, the night I was watching this, I was just, like, I can't tonight. Like, I've done, like, this has already been, like, an emotional roller coaster with the Mm -hmm. nerves and the excitement. And now it's taking a turn. And I just need to turn it off right here and revisit this later. So I did. I turned it off. And I don't know if it was... A day later or two days later, I came back to, like, finish writing these notes on it and watch it. But it was hard to do it. Yeah. Because you're really going back in time. Yeah. Um, So here's where I pick back up. Stephanie comes in and tells Arnie that we're going to add the bathhouse to the scene that night. And it's all last minute. And as you can see, I read you the schedule a little bit ago. It's Mm -hmm. not on the schedule. And And we were supposed to be wrapped by five. And we're supposed to be wrapped (laughs) by five. And Arnie tells her, we're going to lose one of the girls. And Stephanie says, so do it with two girls. And initially I was like totally pissed that she would Mm -hmm. say that. I was like, what a bitch. Like, how could she say that? And then, um, I feel like it might've been a prompt though. I don't know if I feel that way because I worked with Stephanie a lot or, but I just, when I watched that scene, it felt like a fed line. Like the producers were like, oh, we need to get somebody saying oh, we need to wrap up, but what are we going to do? We can't get this shot. And then we need you giving Arnie permission to say, no, just do it with two girls. Because I feel like 
Stephanie or any editor would have like wanted permission from Hef before moving along with that or wanted to check with everybody, especially since Hef's getting grumpy because we're not wrapped. Yeah. Like it doesn't make any sense. And that shot, like you said, the viewers don't know this, but it was not even on schedule. It's like somebody made it up on the fly. Right. So I want to break this down (laughs) in depth here because I have a lot of thoughts on this. So it shows me upset that, Mm -hmm. that you guys are going to, um, like in the moment, like we're still in the grotto. It shows me upset, but at this point it shows me upset because they're going to shoot with just two girls and like, what time do you have to leave? Oh, well, she has to leave. But, um, I, I wasn't upset yet because I was still of the mindset that I knew like the next day or whatever that we were going to be shooting just two on two photos Mm -hmm. and there was individual photos being done. So I have no idea how this is all going to pan out or how I'm just assuming in my head that they're going to keep it fair. Yeah. They're just trying to get as much content as possible. Yeah. And so the fact that they're going to do another scene in the bathhouse, that's not even on the schedule. Yeah. I'm disappointed that I can't be part of it, but at the same time, I'm not thinking that this is the end of the world and I'm not as upset as they're trying to make it look like I am getting at this point. But I also want to want to plant another seed here, and maybe I'm crazy, and I want I really want everybody to chime in, like in comments or whatever later on. But this may have been like a whole setup to begin with, because, like I said, it was never on the schedule, so it kind of mm-hmm. comes out of nowhere. Yeah. And then when Stephanie says that to Arnie, that well, we'll just shoot it with two people, really. Even though she's like one of the photo editors and stuff, she doesn't really have the authority to say that. It's a pictorial with all three of Hef's girlfriends. Mm -hmm. If she were to shoot something with just two girls that Hef wanted three people in, it could be her ass in trouble. Like big time trouble for that. Like why wasn't Bridget in this shot if Hef didn't know anything about it? Yeah. So I have to assume that Hef was in on this knowing that it was just going to be two people. So whether where his head was at at this time too, or where Stephanie's head is at this time too, maybe they're all thinking as well that there's going to be pictures with two people, yeah. some with three, some just one. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know. But I'm starting to feel like it's a setup here. And it put me in a really bad situation because I'm finally getting to do, and this is where they're putting the stakes up yeah. too. Like, I'm finally getting to do this shoot that I've been wanting to do practically my whole life. Been waiting for this moment. And now I'm going to be excluded from part of it. And, or my other option is, you went to class for an entire semester and you're going to miss the final, which will automatically fail you from this class. Yeah, so, like who would do that? Yeah, so here's your choices. Um, you either, you know, fail out of this class or you do the shower scene. So I don't know. I just feel like it put me in a really, really bad position. And I obviously chose to go to class because in the end, that's probably more important than being left out of a single photo. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm, I'm nowhere near as upset as it makes it look like I am in this scene. Cause I still think that this is all going to be fair in the end. Yeah, because, like, the next morning it was supposed to be that scene with just me and you. Right. And who knows, like, maybe one with you and Kendra would have been added down the line. Like, we just don't know anything at this point. Yeah. And then I also have to do a little insert here because so many people ask me, like, what did your closet look like? And what did your bathroom look like and stuff? There's a scene right here. And if you pause it, you can really get a good look. <laughs> but um, I am sitting on the floor of my closet and I'm putting on my shoes, getting ready to go to class. And I'm yelling out to Anastasia, who's in the other room, that I have to um, do this. And you can see my whole, almost my whole closet, except for obviously what's behind the the camera. But it's drawers and cabinets on one side and then long like wardrobe cabinets at the end and then on the other side of me is um shoe cubby for days with like a hundred like a hundred cubbies yeah. in it that I had them custom make for me and paint it pink and bring in because there was really nowhere to put all my shoes except for on the bottom of the closet and then they get kind of like lost in the back so you get a really good look at my closet in yeah I have in my notes I'm like your closet looks like a dream <laughs> I did like that it was kind of small but, but the I did angle like it. makes it look really good it makes it look more spacious too yeah so the next scene is I'm running off to UCLA. They actually send a camera crew to catch that drama mm-hmm. of me going to class <laughs> to show that I really went. 
And, um, and then it cuts to Kendra, uh, you guys shooting the scene and Kendra in, is talking in voiceover over the top of it saying you guys bonded doing the shower scene that it makes, um, uh, and I, she's just talking about how much, you know, how close you guys got and how bonded you guys and everything. And, and it I makes, think that's a fed line too. It totally could have been, but it made me feel like extra awful. Which is shitty because I'm positive that was a fed line and they're going for that. Because there's no way Kendra's going to say, oh, that was a bonding experience for me and Holly. And yeah, it was like a fun, easy scene to shoot, but I wouldn't call it a bonding experience. And that's just not the kind of thing Kendra even says. That is true. I feel like that's a prompt. Like, so would you say, because she's sitting there in the interview and the producer's probably asking her, so would you say the shower scene was a bonding experience for you and Holly? And when we're in the interview, we just want to get it over with. So she's probably like, yeah, I would say the shower scene was a bonding experience. Like so much of what we say in this show is just us parroting back what they want us to say. Yeah, definitely. So that's totally possible. But I'm just saying it made me feel like awful. And it made mm-hmm. me feel like I missed on, really missed out on something. And that I, I started to feel like, and even watching it back, I'm starting to feel like, you know what? I'm not even needing in this I'm not like wanted I'm not not trying to make people feel bad or anything but I really started feeling these feelings like that well it's important for you to point out because that didn't even occur to me like I knew how it would feel to have like a whole extra big picture of two other people like I knew that would suck and I would feel the same way if that was me but like I didn't even think about like that part of it or like missing out on something fun you know what I mean because it was just like a I felt like it was a really fast, really easy shoe. It was fun. I felt like I loved the way I looked in it because my hair was wet because I was going through a phase where I hated my hair. But it didn't seem like a very consequential scene to me. But yet they're building it up to make it look like it is. Yeah. To me, it just felt like a quick add-on, extra content, cool, bye. Yeah. And I just, I think that it was really compounded too because that's sort of how I felt a lot of the time. And so that scene, like amplified it that feeling for why me. did you feel like that a lot of the time was it just like the way we all kind of felt like only feeling like we're one third of a person maybe I just, it definitely wasn't like me and Kendra having a special bond no <laughs> no 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 I never felt like that no I felt like it was like Kendra's the young and fun one with a good body who's meant to be in playboy and all that kind of stuff meant to be at the mansion and Holly's in love and the main girlfriend and you know and then and then why do they need me then like, oh. I'm just sort of there, like, like, I don't have, we needed you. <laughs> I needed you. Aw. <laughs> but that's just how that scene made me feel. Yeah. And that, that. that things were better without me. That's, I think oh. that kind of sums it up. Like, oh, yeah, I can see. Like, I'm here, but really things would just be better if I wasn't. Like, oh, I don't like that. Yeah. And so they're showing you guys shooting the shower scene. And then they show Anastasia, and she's like... <laughs> They cut it to make it look like she's just scowling and yeah. hating. Yeah, because they're building this up for the next scene that's about to happen. Yeah. But they show Anastasia just staring and, and looking bored, but also looking pissed that they're shooting this without me. And not to give too much of Anastasia's thoughts away, because we are going to be having her come on the show for an interview very soon. But she felt like they were deliberately trying to make her look left out and jealous that we were all shooting. And yeah, stuff. I felt like they were trying to make her look like she was scowling on your behalf, kind of. And that too, Or like giving yeah. the evil eye, like how dare you. <laughs> yeah, that she was like my spy or whatever. Yeah. And maybe part of that could have been partially true. Like I might have told her like, oh, like hang out and like let me know how Keep it goes. Posted, yeah. yeah, but not in like a, you know, like. Creepy way. <laughs> yeah, I want to know every detail. Tell me how fucked up it was or whatever. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, not like that. Um, and really, I mean, she had been standing around all day watching all these pictorials, for yeah. days, watching all these pictorials and watching us get our hair blown out time after time. Oh, it took so long. And yeah. makeup and touch-ups and stuff. And she was honestly just bored half the time. Uh-huh. Um, but, and then they have you making a comment, this is also building the stakes, mm-hmm. they have you making a comment saying, I think they're going to be sensitive about keeping the photos even. Yeah, because it never occurred to me that they wouldn't be. Yeah. Because I felt like that was kind of the alleged supposed rule is that everything was supposed to be, <clears throat> that everything was supposed to be quote unquote fair's fair in the world of the girlfriends. Like that was always, you know, Hep's excuse like, well, I can't put one girlfriend as a playmate because what would I do with all these other seven? And like, I never felt like I really got anything extra or special for being the main girlfriend. Like I felt like that was the way it was supposed to be was that everybody was supposed to be treated equal. Yeah. 
Yeah, and then, um, let's see where am I? Oh, but spoiler alert, obviously that's not what they do. They don't keep it even. Or is this part of the setup that I'm talking about? Like, are they doing this purposely for the show? Like, I don't know. You, yeah. I seriously want you guys to chime in on this. Yeah, weigh in, guys. I'm going to keep showing more examples, and I honestly don't know the answer. So, like, there's not going to be a resolution at the end of this. Like, we'll say what we think, but, like, I really want your guys' opinions. Um, they don't show – we talked about this already. They don't show all the scenes. I don't even talk about that again. Then they show me coming home from class. And it looks so late. Yeah. It's well, like midnight. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it was midnight, but I think it was probably like 10, 1030. Because okay, it, so it was like a dark. three hour class probably. Um, and there's this really awkward scene. I'm sitting on my bed. It's so unnatural. The scene with Anastasia. She's like on my bed. And something's not right about it too because they have the tv on so i noticed like that a, too because ordinarily when the camera crew would come in your room you'd have to turn off the tv because they don't have a they don't want the sound in the background but also they don't have the clearance or licensing to use the sound or use the visuals so it makes me feel like they're kind of like have the cameras up before you knew they were ready because oh of course they're not going to be getting footage when the tv's still on that's what we would have been thinking so there's something off with the scene there's something up yeah if yeah the first thing is it's so unnatural and awkward and it's frank invited totally because Ugh. anastasia doesn't even respond to my questions in a way that you would respond to mm -hmm. anything that was being asked and the TVs, like, there's just so many weird things about this scene. So I just know that there's something off. I can't quite put my f finger on how it really went down, but I just know it wasn't how they show it. And they put so much suspense on it, which for reality TV, you guys, I think uh -huh. it's really a funny scene. Uh -huh. Like, it makes Anastasia look scared shitless to tell me that yeah. the shit turned out really good and that <laughs> it was sexy. Because in reality, I talked to her about this recently while I was watching this, and she couldn't see anything because the the showers are actually in a small little shower room, and there's the camera and the lights and the cameraman and the assistants and everything, and makeup artists and hair people all like clamoring to be in the doorway. She said she couldn't see anything going on. Like, so she didn't even see the scene, but it has me like questioning her with like so much drama. Yeah. How did the scene go? Did you stick around and watch it? W w did it look good? Like, you know, all these like questions mm -hmm. and it's just so not the way it happens. Cut to Hess and Holly back in the bedroom. Which is the same scene they used before. Yeah. Same exact scene. Like, this is not a different day in reality. <laughs> but Hef is talking about how much he loves the shower photos. Uh-huh. And that's, again, a setup here. We're like... It is. And I feel like the only thing, even if he did like the shower photos, the only thing unique about it, it wasn't that it was me and Kendra. It's just that it was kind of an easy scene to, like, move around in. You know what I mean? Just because, like, the air, the area of, like, a shower is so narrow. And with two people, it's always easier to move around than with three people. Like, it doesn't matter which two. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, and then it immediately cuts to the next scene, and I'm crying. Like, I was going to ask you, how long did they make you sit there and question you till you cried? Good question. I'm not even sure, but it wasn't just like I'm crying at the top, at the top of the interview, yeah. you know, like it's, and let me just preface this by saying it's not like the next morning where, yeah, so this next scene, like it's immediately me crying, saying it's not fair. And this was like just so, it's so out of context for the episode because really this is like weeks later. And the only reason I'm upset, I'm not upset just because I... They shot without me the night before, which is what it sort of makes it look mm -hmm. like. It's like the next morning I'm crying and devastated. It's actually weeks later, and it's because I saw the brown book, and I saw that mm -hmm. there was a photo, that it was determined what the photos were going to be, or at least down to a few, and they picked the the two on two, or just whatever, how do you want to call it, that yeah. two shot in the shower, and aren't using any of our individuals or any of the other ones. So the only person that's left out of a photo was me. Uh-huh. And it was like a full page. So it was a big deal. It wasn't like some tiny little corner. Right. Yeah. It was definitely a full page. It was like a featured prominent thing. And I'm left out of it. And I just thought, how, wait, how could they do this? Like, 
that is so unfair. Yeah. And at the time, I just kind of thought it was Hef being a quote unquote stupid male, like just not thinking or not factoring in how much it was important to us or factoring in like the emotions that would be involved. But now that I'm hearing more and more about the story, I feel like this was done on purpose, probably. It wasn't just him having a moment and flipping through photos and tearing off options and really fast and just being like, there. I think it was more obvious. I mean, obviously, now that we're going over all this stuff, it was more thought out than that. Yeah. And the way the show was edited, too, like like I said, it's so abrupt. Like, it's just like the next morning I'm upset and crying. Yeah. But really, the next day we're shooting at the bunny house and we do our two-on-two pictures. Mm -hmm. And it's weeks before the actual photos come back. I mean, this isn't digital photography where all of a sudden they have it all up. Like, we have to wait for the photos to come back. And then they, like, copy them and they make this big brown book that Hef hid from us forever, which we're going to get into. Yeah. And then it's not until way later that I see this. Way later. Like, the photos have to be developed, then edited edited in Chicago then Chicago puts up a mock-up with like all these different pictures stacked on top in each spot and he can pick one it just takes forever yeah and they don't show me seeing the brown book at this point so like how do I even know that they're not using that they're going to use that photo and not one with me in it yeah like, they're just I, trying to make it look like you're mad because we did the shoe right and they're omitting the fact that you and I did a shoe and that all this other stuff happened right and I just watching back on it I just felt so frustrated because I'm thinking I'm up every morning the first person down to hair and makeup I mean you too but mm -hmm. you know what I mean like and um and I stay until the very end except for that one thing which isn't even on the schedule which everybody knew I needed and it's just again that whole feeling of being unneeded unliked and just feeling like it was all unfair and I'm a Libra and you know I can't yeah. have that <laughs> And also, like, I don't like the message it sends because we're already right smack in the middle of early 2000s bimbo culture, and they're making it look like you made a bad choice by choosing your final and your education and not wasting a whole semester of time and tuition over one shoe. Exactly. Like, it's not the right message to send. <laughs> and you know what? I never really thought about it that way before, but it's totally true. They're mm -hmm. totally trying to punish me for making the decision to go to school and finish my class. Yeah, and sadly, like, there was a lot of, like, really young girls watching this show. And I do think that they, you know, went out of their way to show that you were educated, and that was great, and they did think they thought that was important to portray. But in this episode, they're sending the wrong message. They are. And I will say that throughout all of the years, um, on social media or however, people have gotten messages to me at some point. And even, even in real life, like people come up to me or whatever, I can't tell you how many people have told me that I encourage them to go to school based on That's watching awesome. the show. Yeah. And like so many nurses mm -hmm. and like just so many people that continued their education because like I inspired them to do that. Yeah. And I just feel like that's so amazing that the mm -hmm. show was able to do that. So I definitely don't think that that was their goal long term. Yeah. I think they definitely show that education was important to me and it was something that I was working on. But in this scene, you're absolutely right. They're trying to punish me for making the decision to go to school after how much this supposedly means to me. I'm willing to mm -hmm. like give up a shot and finish school. Kendra says in commentary here that, um, if they would have left her out, she would have been, felt the same way, too, which I felt like was very supportive and, mm -hmm. and true, yeah. very true. Um, and then I, I'm in scene again in the interview saying that I wanted this just as much as or more than anyone, and I feel like I'm being gypped, and I still feel that I was being gypped. I still feel this way because I was. Like, they were literally trying to take something away from me, and, and like I said, the more I'm watching this now, I think it was all a plan the whole time. I think it was too, because every episode they're trying to figure out what the conflict is. They already have you pegged from episode two as being quote unquote, the emotional one about the pictorial and they know how much it means to you. This wasn't a shoot that was on the schedule. We were supposed to be wrapped by five. Everything about it reeks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The fed lines yeah. or appear to be fed lines. And I was going to say, too, if you go back to episode two, I'm the only one that, like, is suggesting that I even care about this pictorial. Yeah. And so, of course, I'm the one that they need to do this to. And then the next scene. Oh, this next scene. This next scene is really fucked up. It is. It's and a I, breach of privacy. And I think people have no idea. No, they don't. Well, I wrote about it in my book, if you're really paying attention. Oh. That's for a fraction of people. <laughs> 
So this next scene, I'm in my room and I'm petting Gizmo and Hef comes in to talk to me and it's actually not the scene you think it is. Like, this is a totally different scene. Mm -hmm. We're talking about something totally different. I'm actually laughing and smiling. Yeah, if you look closely, you can see you're happy. And (laughs) we're talking about Gizmo and stuff. And But what really happened is now I have seen the brown book. I'm upset that they are putting one picture in without me. And it's not evenly across the board. And I talked to Mary about it in real life. And Mary tells me that I need to take it up with Hef. And that is not something that's fun to do. And I was dreading it. So later that night when Hef was done with the office and stuff, I went to his room. And I tell the camera crew, I don't want to do this on camera. I don't want to talk about this on camera. And they try to encourage me, even Hef, to like talk about it on camera. And I refuse. And I, I said I'm not comfortable with it. And I don't want this discussion on camera. And so they finally agree to shut off the cameras and leave. And they do. And Hef and I have this whole conversation about how upset I was over that that they're using this one scene. And um, and I, I told them that I was I didn't really want to come to him with it because I didn't want to seem like I was uh like I, I was just embarrassed because I felt like we had so much fun and we did so many amazing scenes and I had so many amazing sh- shots and it was such a, I was so grateful for the opportunity and I didn't want him to think that that wasn't enough for me just because I got left out of one photo. I didn't want him to think that I was ungrateful for the opportunities that I was given because I totally was. But at the same time, I couldn't help but feel so left out and unwanted just because of that one picture and, and I just felt like no one cared and I felt replaceable and I felt not needed. And I felt like it was just so unfair to keep that photo in there. And, um, I don't like confrontation. And can we talk about how scary it was to go to Hef with anything? Yeah. Because you just never knew how he would react. Like if I were in that situation, I would assume that Hef, 90% chance Hef would snap at me and be like, what the fuck? You're lucky to be in this thing. I'd be making everybody else a playmate without you. Like, I'd be, like, scared. I was scared to death because that's exactly what I thought. I thought two things. One, I thought Hef and if the cameras were filming me are going to think that I'm not grateful for the opportunity that I Mm -hmm. got. And two, I thought Hef was going to be like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Like I gave you this whole pictorial that you've always wanted and now, and you're going to complain about one picture and stuff. I totally thought he was going to be mad at me about it. And so, but I felt like it was worth risking because it, it meant that much to me. Mm-hmm. And because I probably wouldn't have said anything if Mary didn't push me to say, yeah. you need to talk to him about it, especially if you're this upset about it. Um, yeah, and I just like watching this again. I felt so many emotions, like the roller coaster of this. Like, I it was such an amazing experience to shoot all this stuff, yeah. and now I feel like I'm just being slapped in the face with this ending here. Like, mm-hmm. ugh. And I, you know, I wanted to love and did love every minute of shooting this. So it, I felt like part of it was being ripped away from me by doing this to me at the yeah. end. And it, and now it's even more frustrating because I feel like it was all stage drama, but here's what happens, you guys. Well, let me finish telling you what happens in the scene. Then let me tell you what happened. That's so fucked up. Ultimately, Hef is very understanding in this whole scene and he's very, very sweet about it since he understands how I feel and he's like very easily convinced that this is a bad move and that we need to reshoot it. And he, um, and I tell him that I feel bad if everyone needs to reshoot. And, uh, and he tells me that, Oh, don't worry about it. This isn't a tough, it's not like this is a tough scene to redo. It's an easy shot and makes me feel really good about it. And, you know, he tells me that he's upset that I'm upset over uh-huh. it. So he's, like, very, very understanding and very sweet. So you probably felt like you hit the jackpot that day. Like, damn, how'd I get off so easy without a fucking lecture? I did. <laughs> and I felt really good about it. And I thought, wow, I can talk to Hef about things. And he does understand. And this is obviously unfair if he's going to, like, 
you know, agree to a change that quickly. And because I know it's expensive to reshoot, to have everybody there again, like, and set up at the mansion again, mm-hmm. and hair and makeup and just all this stuff. So the fact that he's willing to do that again, I was like, just so happy. And, and the, he ends it by saying, we're going to, we're fit. We'll figure out a solution to this. I'll, let me, let me handle it. And the next scene, we're shooting the shower scene, mm-hmm. all three of us, like reshooting it. But even though I'd asked the cameras not to film this, we were still mic'd and they were recording the audio and they overplayed the audio of that scene of Cat of, of Hef and I petting Gizmo. Yeah, after you'd asked for privacy, they just lift the audio anyway. They used all the audio. Like, it's fucked up. If you're going to use the audio anyway, you might as well have used the footage. Yeah. Like, I'd asked for privacy. Yeah. And and mind you, let me just remind you, I know we already reminded yeah. you once in this thing, we are not being paid for this. Yeah. And I have asked for one thing to not have the cameras record. The only thing you'd ask for. Yeah. <laughs> and they can't do it. They yeah. just can't do it. It's so bad. They still use my audio without my knowledge and without my permission. And then... And then act like it's just funny and what I owe them. And it's just part of it. And nobody gives a shit. And I remember, like, being, like, just devastated by it when it shows up in the scene, too. And stressed about it. Because, like I said, I don't want all the viewers watching to think that I'm, like, nitpicking and not grateful for the opportunity. And it's just, it, it really bothers me. Yeah, it's fucked up. It's like we're being treated like fish in an aquarium. It's like, how dumb do they think we are? Like, they can't just sit us down and be like... Okay, Bridget, so this is how the episode is going to go. How should we resolve this? And you guys could have come to, like, some kind of compromise. Like, there's so many different ways you could have done this. Like, they could have come to me and Kendra and be like, why don't you guys go to half and be like, no, Bridget needs to be in the shot. Like, there's so many ways you could have resolved that or done the drama. But it's like they were doing this gross social experiment with us where we think we're on a level with them you know, recording this reality show and we think we can ask for privacy or whatever and it's going to be granted. But no, they wanted to try and get as much raw shit without paying us and just broadcast it crazy and not blur the nudity and everything. And it's just gross. Yeah. And they use that shot, Petting Gizmo, because it makes it look like Hef comes to me. Which is another fucked up thing because it's like they're they're always framing Hef as being like so benevolent and so like caring about our feelings. And it's not like he wasn't ever generous or kind or caring to some people, but the way he's portrayed on the show is not how he was in my relationship. Yeah, I mean, he definitely didn't come to me. I definitely had to go to him to talk about this. This whole conversation happened in his room, not at my cat tree. And the reason that I'm looking down and being, like, so weird in the thing is because this isn't what I'm talking about. They had to hide my face. Yeah. So it had to be something totally different that I'm Mm -hmm. talking about because I'm not saying these things in that scene. Yeah. So it's just the whole thing is so messed up. And, um... And once you know that, you can't unsee it. Like, if any of you guys go back and watch the episode now, you can totally see that it doesn't match. And you can see, like, the side sliver of your face. You can tell you're happy and smiling. Like, it's not... Like, you can see it once it's been pointed out. Yeah. And, uh... But the... I think it's interesting that you said, like, why didn't they have, like, Kendra and I go up and uh, you and Kendra go up and and say, like, oh, we need to redo this scene or whatever. Because I feel like they're not done with the drama here. Mm -hmm. They're trying to make it look in the next shoot, like, we're obviously going to reshoot in the bathhouse. And I'm already feeling guilty and really upset that I'm having to make everybody be back here again and reshoot something. So I'm already, like, feeling like I'm kind of walking on eggshells and everyone's (laughs) probably, like, mad at me or annoyed at me or whatever. And, um, I feel like they definitely tried to make you look annoyed. That was weird. And for me, I remember thinking, not that I was anti doing it because I loved any chance I got to shoot with Playboy, but I remember, I remember I did think it was kind of strange that we were reshooting that because I feel like it would have been so easy to just tear out that photo of me and Kendra and replace it with one of the multitudes of photos we took of the three of us. Because like we've mentioned before, there are sets that we shot a whole day at the Playmate house that never even made it into the pictorial. So I remember thinking it was a little odd that we were reshooting. And I thought, is it even going to work the same? Is it going to be as easy to shoot fit three of us into that tiny little, because those shower spaces weren't very big and the photos ended up great and it was a fun day and everything. But I just remember, and I wasn't anti it by any means, but I do remember thinking it was odd. 
But now that you're putting all the pieces together and saying, what if this was set up from the beginning? Well, that makes total sense that it had to be reshot rather than, oh, let's just swap photos. <laughs> hit my mic. Rather than let's just swap photos. Yeah. It's weird. The whole thing is fishy. Yeah. And then Kendra is complaining about the reshoot. So I feel like they're setting it up to let you look annoyed. Kendra is complaining that we have to reshoot. I can't believe we have to do this again. Like we're so resentful. Like yeah. God forbid we yeah. get in the shower. <laughs> yeah. I feel like that's totally what they're playing into. But then in commentary, Kendra's actually very supportive. And yeah. she said, yeah, we should have done this. Like uh, three is better than two. Yeah. And then... Um, I'm just reading my book here. Oh, and then my honest feelings too, like watching this back. I'm like, well, damn straight. You know what? I don't feel bad about this anymore. This is how it should have been from the beginning. Yeah. Like I'm tired of feeling guilty about it because I did feel guilty about it for so many years. Like I made everybody go and do this. Like I had to be like the squeaky wheel or whatever. But I'm just like, I no, it should have never been shot without me in the first place. Unless they were going to do a whole series like that, as we uh -huh. discussed before. And I'm so happy that I spoke up for myself and I said something and pushed for what I wanted. Of course. And after we shot it, I felt so much better. I don't know if everybody else did, but yeah. I did. <laughs> and I felt like things were finally fair. And you know how much that means to me because I'm a Libra. <laughs> and all is well. Yes. In my book, anyway. I wrote a note here and I said something about being Frank invited in the director's chairs, but I forgot what that meant. Did Arnie give us the director's chairs that day? Like, do you see the Arnie director's chairs? Or we is don't get the Arnie's hair and makeup. It must be us in hair and makeup because we don't get the director's chairs until we do our cover shoot, I think. Okay. So I have in my notes that we're Frank invited when we're in the director's chair, which I think means like hair and makeup and they're well, Frank inviting what we're saying. Okay. So that's when you're looking annoyed that we have to reshoot and that's oh. when Kendra is complaining about having to reshoot. Oh, so they just probably cut random dialogue in there. I think so. That's annoying. Um, cause I can't imagine us being mad about doing another playboy shoot. Like I was desperate to do as much content as possible. Yeah. <laughs> And then there's a funny scene here. There's a guy outside the shower that I noticed. Uh -huh. And then, and we all scream and like freak yeah, out. Yeah, because he thought it was like a peeping Tom. Yeah, but it turns out it was somebody from the crew. So we were like, oh, okay, never mind. Didn't somebody, didn't one of us say something about catching one of Hef's friends, like fucking a girl back there? Yeah, 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 there was. There definitely was that. That is so funny. Not at that moment. Not no. when we were shooting the scene, but like during a party or something. Yeah. Somebody got caught. Um, so then the next scene, we're in Mary's office, and you find ripped up photos in the garbage. So Hef was hiding our pictures from us because, you know, in the office, if you walk down there, like I would go visit Mary every morning, I would always see like the Playmate pictorials come through or like the potential photos or like the brown book mock-up he would have of the new magazines coming out. And I love to like look through those. And because he knew that, he made sure that our photos were hid from us. So the fact that you even saw a mock-up with the photo of me and Kendra in it, like that was left out. But like all the previous iterations were like ripped up and in the garbage. Like to me, that says it was set up. Interesting. Very interesting. So Kendra and I were very excited to find ripped up prints of our nudes in the trash bin so we were digging them out and trying to put them together and then have come down and busted us yeah well a few notes that i have on that too is i think that kendra's excitement in that photo like she's jumping up and down and literally giddy and i yeah. felt like it was so genuine and fun in that scene yeah and then i love that you guys are piecing together like it's some sort of puzzle uh-huh you got your puzzle all you wanted <laughs> and you were like i wasn't snoopy or something like that and i'm like oh no she was 100 percent snoopy a thousand percent because they literally hid that brown book from us for like weeks yeah we were desperate to see what our photos looked like and we were dying and I don't think they posted it but like there's there I remember there was times where you would walk down and be like is the brown book back yet like you would ask Mary is the brown yeah. book back yet and she'd be like what brown book I don't yeah. know what you're talking totally. about yeah. and stuff and you're like damn it and then Hef makes a comment here he says um if he has to stay out of the guest house then you have to stay out of the office or something like mm -hmm. that and, but they don't clarify what that means. Like, I feel like it kind of, 
leads it to believe that you are worried about him going to the guest house for some yeah. reason. And I feel like that implies that you're worried that he's going to be like down there doing stuff with girls oh or something. Oh my God, that's funny. And so I just wanted to clarify because they aren't showing it. Yeah. What's going on in the guest house and why you don't want him in there. Yeah. So my plot line that I had suggested for the show was, oh, I'm going to be redecorating the guest house. Follow me doing that. And they did to some extent, but they didn't use it at all. Because initially they only ordered eight episodes for season one. And they didn't use any of that footage. Because I'm convinced that the producers either didn't want me to have any personality or hobbies. Or just thought I was boring as fuck. I don't know what they (laughs) did. And eventually they ended up using some of that footage and that plot line of me redecorating the guest house in additional episodes for season one that were ordered after. But initially it wasn't used because they didn't like me. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. Um, so the last scene. Oh, I wanted, I also said I wanted to note here that Winnie isn't in any of these scenes leading up to, uh, except for this final scene that's about to come up. Because all of this was shot before I ever had Winnie. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, all of a sudden Winnie's there in the last scene because, because... This is weeks later when the pictures come back. Weeks later. So all this kind of stuff has gone by since then. Like we shot that pictorial and we've gone, then we've gone to Vegas and we've done Operation Playmate and Mm -hmm. we've done like 4th of July and Fight Night. And then we were at, um, and then I went to North Carolina Mm -hmm. and all that stuff happened without even, without ever seeing the Brown Book. Mm -hmm. So that interview where I'm crying about it's not fair, like all of that is like, now like it's way after way after um so the last scene we're sitting in my room we're all playing with Winnie it's Anastasia and Stacy and Kendra and you and I and Hef comes in and he's got the brown book in his hands and we know what that means and it's not the final pictorial. I think they want viewers to think that we're seeing our final version of the pictorial but if you look closely you can see that there's stacks of like photos stacked on top of each other on each page. So that's Hef's options. Like which ones, and he'll tear off the ones he doesn't want and later tear them up and throw them in the, (laughs) in the waste basket. Yeah. But so this is not, this is not really like a look at the final thing. Like we think there's still options. We don't know what Hef is going to pick. Right. Because they show us looking through the Brown book Mm -hmm. and the photo of just you and Kendra in the bathhouse is in there. Yeah, it's still there. But I'm not freaking out about it yet. I don't think I'm still freaked out about that. In real time, I'm not still freaked out about that because it's just an option. Yeah. So I don't know what the rest of the book is going to look like. Yeah, for all we know, our individual photos could be in there. Yeah, I see all these different options, so I don't know if that's what he's going to go with. So we still don't know it. So I'm genuinely happy, even though there's that photo in there. These are, you know, genuine scenes. And then Hef finally tells us in this moment that... We're definitely set for November, mm-hmm. but they leave it still with like a little bit of a cliffhanger because they leave it with like a OTF interview of me saying that I feel like at any moment, like I'm not going to get my hopes up because I still yeah. feel like at any moment this could be taken away from us because I did feel that way. Yeah. We no- never knew. November was still a long time yeah. away and like at any moment, like Chicago or whatever could be like, you know, this just isn't a good idea yeah. or the show's not as popular as we wanted it to be. Mm-hmm. So let's cut this. Like yeah. we shouldn't do air-, air this. So I just knew that nothing was certain until it was like printed and like in front of me. Yeah. So I just didn't want to get my hopes up. 